Toastmasters and all my dear guests. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So today's thing is grow through what you go through. So difficulty comes to everyone, right? And some will fall and some will take courage to get up and walk. The most important is to get up and walk. Some people will get into the into the challenges, get trip off, and take a bitter, bitter, bitterful life. Some people look into that as an opportunity and come out, come out with a colorful life. Mm -hmm. So I could recollect my life into this today's theme that after my schooling, I joined diploma. I, I told a couple of times a similar one. I thought. It's still, for a newcomer, I could say that. And met into a crowd who doesn't, I met into a diploma crowd, a crowd of people who didn't have any appetite for studies. Consequently, the result was I plunked nine subjects out of 12. So, fast forward, I repented, I joined as a repeater, as a fresh, to start from square one. And I inculcated all the lessons learned of two years of wasting my life. Then, by God's grace, I've been <laughs> second rank holder, secured in a Karnataka state. Then I went into my, <laughs> went into my engineering, secured gold medal, into my master's, and today I'm here. So, looking back, I took that opportunity as a learned lesson and never want to fall into the same pit which I've fallen back before. So, coming to today's sessions going forward, we have picked three rules, set of rules. First one, we need to refrain on the words which could offend other people. Second, I would request anyone when the, speak, when the speaker is having his speech, please refrain from moving around. If in any inevitable situation, you can move around when there is a time of applause. Third, I will be you 10 seconds of time to quickly switch off or to uh, silence your phone. You can do so now. Okay, so I think uh, everyone has done. So coming to this, coming to today's presiding officer, she is a entrepreneur. Her background is she comes from software developer. She loves football and also swimming. She tried to be a vegan and and fallen very miserably. I could be before trying itself, I would have been miserably failed. Fourthly, she joined Toastmaster three and a half years before, and now she is outgoing sergeant at arms. Let us give a big round of applause and welcome to the presiding officer.
25 years of learning, 25 years of best practices passed down through our members. Uh, in this club, you can learn from our senior members who've been here as Toastmasters for decades. And you can also see innovative ideas coming from our newer Toastmasters who are college students, some of them. You are all going to learn a lot if you decide to join our club. You know, Toastmasters uh, teaches you quite a bit. We all come here to learn about public speaking. But being a Toastmaster also helps you grow as a communicator in other aspects of your life and also grow as a leader. If you would like to know more about Toastmasters, I will ask you to talk to Toastmaster George uh, during our networking break. Now, as I mentioned, Toastmaster George is our outgoing VP membership, and he has a very special uh, session planned for today, an induction session. Can I invite him to carry the session forward? Please give him a round of applause. So, good evening again. So, uh, before outgoing VP member, I had a great privilege to induct another new member into our Bangalore Postmaster family. Uh, this is a very important occasion for all of us, both for the new member and also for us. Uh, this individual have come to Postmaster seeking to improve the communication and leadership skills and we have an opportunity to help them, to help her learn, grow and achieve. So I will now call upon our new member. She comes from a background of software engineer. She works, she has worked as a developer. She loves singing, she plays guitar, keyboard. She is a district level badminton player. Uh, I welcome Sahana to come on stage. Give a big round of applause. <laughs> Sahana, you are joining a worldwide organization that has helped more than 4 million people learn to communicate more effectively. As members of the Bandit Postmaster Club, you will benefit from a proven program of self-development. You will become part of an outstanding group of people who are dedicated to helping one another in a spirit of caring and enjoyment. Um, Vice President of Education uh, have this new member given opportunity to discuss the need and goals with our club and uh, discuss uh, it is just, it is just, right? And also, yeah, sorry, yeah. And also, uh, the mentor has been assigned. So, the mentor for Sahana uh, is Postmaster Priyanka. So, uh, can you please? As an experienced Toastmaster, you have been asked to help this new member to get off a good start. Do you accept this responsibility and pledge to share your knowledge and experience with a new member so that he can immediately begin to benefit from their Toastmaster membership? Yes. Membership in, in this club and in Toastmaster International is a privilege that carries with, with, with it many rewards. Yet it also places certain obligation upon you. We are a group of people brought together to do things we could not accomplish alone. Our collective obligation is to grow and improve ourselves and to share our knowledge and experience with fellow members in a spirit of enjoyment. This means you must work diligently towards your own self-development, evaluate other speakers in a spirit of support and sharing Assist the club in reaching its goal, remain positive and keep a smile on your face. We 
ask you, our new member, to dedicate yourself to personal growth, to share this great gift with our fellow members and to help to keep this Toastmaster club strong and dynamic. So uh, we can take a breath now. We can. Yeah. Uh, we can go together. Yeah. Uh, you, Sana. I, Sana. In the presence of yeah. the members of the club, yeah. make this firm obligation again meeting regularly and, and prepare fully for a new assignment. I to apply myself to the projects outlined in the Toastmaster Education Program. To participate actively in the club activities. To evaluate others in a positive and constructive manner, to build open, friendly relationships with my fellow members, and to bring other new members into the club so that they can also gain the benefits of this process. Would all our club members please stand and repeat the club pledge to the new members? We, the members of the Bangalore Postmaster Club, we, the members of the Bangalore Postmaster Club, Pledge to support you. Pledge to support you in your quest for self-development. In your quest for self-development. To provide you with positive. To provide you with positive. Helpful evaluation. Helpful evaluation. To maintain a friendly. To maintain a friendly. Supportive atmosphere. Supportive atmosphere. To give you opportunities. To give you opportunities. To help others. To help others. And to make our Toastmaster a member. To make our Toastmaster membership a rewarding, a rewarding and fulfilling experience. And fulfilling experience. Thank you all. Thank Let us give a big round of applause. different servers run 
because I had to actually go and fix them, right? And I know that I had learned a lot more in this one month than I did in the few months prior to that. I was watching this interesting video uh, discussion on Stoicism. And they have an interesting perspective on growth. When things go easy, we say, say that fortune favors us. And we can see fortune giving us gifts, right? But when things are difficult, we say that fortune has abandoned us. But that's not how Stoics look at the world. When things are difficult, they say that fortune is still giving you something. It has given you this experience. And what is that experience? Anyone? Growth. Growth. Exactly. Now, uh, I know all of us have heard about, most of us have heard about Tony Robbins. And he has said an interesting thing. Growth starts at the end of your comfort zone. I'm sure all of us agree, right? Good. Now to take our meeting forward, we have a very charismatic Toastmaster. He works at Diversity as a sector leader for beverage and brewing. He is a seasoned Toastmaster and he's been one for nine years. And you can see the breadth of experience that he has brings onto the stage. I found out that we have a few things in common. He loves wildlife and traveling. And just like me, he is also an introvert, which is surprising when you meet him. Friends, please put your hands together to help me welcome onto the stage someone I personally look up to, our incoming VP education Toastmaster Vedinathan. Thank you, Madam President, for that lovely words. So it was the year 2007. So Michael Phelps was under the star. And he had just won six gold medals in the previous Olympics, which was 2004 Athens Olympics. And he was destined for greater heights in the days to come as well. And that's when, in the month of October 2007, just months before 2008 Olympics, something very unfortunate happened to him. When he was about to step onto his friend's car, he fumbled, fell down, and broke his wrist. He's an excellent swimmer, but he's a lousy walker. That's how life is, isn't it? So you gain some, and then you lose some. And just because he broke his wrist, he couldn't practice. So Olympics were just months away. And all that he could do was he could just get onto the pool and then he can float and then all that he can do was to just keep his legs kicking. He started kicking his legs, just floating. And that it continued for quite some weeks. And then fast forward, 2008, Beijing Olympics, he had already won six gold medals. And then the seventh medal, which was supposed to be again a gold medal for him, the competition was a butterfly 100 meter stroke. So that was one of his favorite. And he got into the pool and then he and the Serbian swimmer went neck to neck till 95 meters and then something incredible happens at the 95th meter. All that he did was he did one strong kick and then plunged in. And then goal number seven. And then spectators were stunned. The pundits were stunned. And then they were trying to replay, re see, see the replay again and again to figure out what made him so special at the last five meters. And the reason, that strong kick that he gave at the end of 95th meter, that propelled him forward. And that kick was a result of the practice that he put in when he was in full of pain, when he was going through that agony. 
improve when he was going through the cutting. And this is a classic example of how one can use the time that somebody is going through the phase of agony. And this is a classic example of perseverance as well. And same is the case even in our Toastmasters fraternity many years back, many close to 100 years back, more than 100 years back, one gentleman decided to start a club which can support people in becoming better speakers and communicators. And he started a club in 1903 to begin with. And it failed. And he had to close it down. 1905, again he started. And he had to shut it because he wanted to move to a different city. And finally, after a lot of trials and tribulations in the year 1924, this gentleman started a club called Toastmasters at Santa Ana in California. And ever since, this particular moment has grown by leaps and bounds and helping millions and millions of people to improve their communication skills and leadership skills. And today, we have more than 16,000 clubs in more than 140 countries and supporting many people like us to become better speakers. And I think we ourselves need a big round of applause for being a part of this wonderful fraternity. And I could see quite a few guests who are coming for the very first time for the benefit of them. So let me say what exactly happens in a typical Toastmasters meeting. A typical Toastmasters meeting would have three sessions. And the first session typically is a feedback speech session in which a speaker comes prepared. He delivers a speech based on certain specific project guidelines. And the second session is called as a table topic session in which a speaker comes on stage and the table topic master would give a speech or a topic. And the speaker has to speak on that particular topic for close to two minutes without any preparation. And then finally, there is a third session which is called as an evaluation session, in which a seasoned Toastmaster, typically an experienced Toastmaster, dissects the entire proceedings of the meeting and gives a lot of suggestions, inputs on how exactly the quality of the meeting can be improved. And today, to take us through this particular session, we have with us a Toastmaster who has been with us for the past three years. She has served our club in the capacity of Sergeant of Arms, in the capacity of VPPR, VP membership, and now she serves the division as an event chair. And she also works with a company that connects people, which is Nokia, as the senior software engineer. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together to welcome our general evaluator of the day, Toastmaster Priyanka. Very good evening, fellow Toastmasters and dear guests. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. As a general evaluator, it's my responsibility to evaluate the entire meeting before and during the meeting. And for this, I have a team, or the evaluation team. Let me introduce them, who will be assisting me in this entire meeting. First, I would like to call the timer, Toastmaster Chaitan, to please lead our field. For prepared speech, it is five to seven minutes. Five minutes, I'll hold up the green card. And six minutes, I'll hold up the yellow card. And the seventh minute, I will load up the uh, red card. For uh, table topic, it is a one to two minutes. First minute, I load up the green card, and in the second minute, I load up the yellow card. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. As in our counter, we have Toastmaster Sita Rama. So 
the quality of being open and honest. Uh, the definition and pronunciation is found on the board at the front of the room. I will record these participants who properly use the word of the day. Furthermore, I will comment on the use of the English language throughout the course of our meeting. I am watching for the seven sins of grammar which include using double negatives, double comparisons such as more, smarter, extra words, incorrect verb tense, confused adjectives and adverbs, inappropriate pronoun use and disagreement of subject and verb. I will also make note of the good usage of the English language. I will present my reports during the evaluation portion of today's meeting. Thank you. Thank you. And I will be joining you all shortly during the evaluation session. Over to Thank you very much. Thank you. I think Elmo is the new head, especially when it comes to table topics. For table topics, when he shows the Elmo, that means it's the end of two minutes. Right, so now, the first session, let's move on to the first session, which is the prepared speech session. And our speaker is going to attempt the icebreaker, which is the first project, which is basically about introducing oneself in front of a larger audience to evaluate this speaker. We have with us a Toastmaster, who is Mr. Lalit Danush Talman. So, Lalit, could you please read out the project items? Still haven't received the project <laughs> The speaker is attempting to break the ice and speak for the first time and introduce himself or herself on stage. So that's the perfect idea for the speaker. This is a classic example of what a table topic is. He doesn't have a project idea, but he manages to speak about what a project is. That's great, Lalit. A round of applause to Lalit. So let me invite our first speaker, Toastmaster Vishwanath, on stage. Who is going to break the ice today? Wonderful. Yeah. There is no set moment in your life that defines you. Every moment is a chance to change your life for a better or a worse. Dear fellow Toastmasters, and yes, born in Sugarcane city of Karnataka, my name is Vishwanath Lakshmipati. I was born to a highly conservative family with deep religious roots. As a childhood, I started, I, I used to spend a lot of time uh, outside playing different games. I was best at hide and seek. So whenever it was my turn to hide, I used to, I would run through the backyards and climb a tree. So my siblings used to get tired of looking for me, but my mother always knew where I was hiding. She used to find me on a tree eating fruits. My grandpa was my first teacher and my as a favorite pastime, I would say, during the evenings, I used to sit on his lap and sometimes on, even on his tummy to recite all my topics which I learned in school. My father worked for a banking sector, mother a housewife taking care of three kids. I am the youngest. My elder sister, as per her aspiration, she chose a teaching profession and joined a reputed institution. My brother, he pursued his bachelor's in commerce and prepared for bank exams and continued and followed the footsteps of my dad. In the mid 90s, my dad developed a lot of interest in computers and he was completely leading in 
fact, as a computerized computerizing the branch in one of his uh, where he was a branch manager. So his ideas and learnings, or maybe his principles, influenced me when I was in high school. And then, as planned, I completed my graduation in engineering. So I studied in Bangalore and in the field of electronics and communication field. I started my profession as a system programmer and worked for a Singapore-based company. So I had the opportunity to work with Texas Instruments as a, as a consultant for, for a period of one year. So the company Texas Instruments even assured me a permanent job based on my performance. So I was very happy considering it was my dream company to work with. So I felt that I am at the top of the world thinking the rest of my life would be just a cakewalk. During this period, my siblings, the sisters and my, uh, my brother, actually they also settled down, they got married and moved on with their lives. So my job was going well, or rather my personal and professional life. And there was a, a market, how do I say, uh, a kind of a downturn, wherein there was a global recession. And with this, the job actually which I was working, I was not able to continue because there was a production halt in the chip design due to which I had to lose my job. So my employer asked me to leave the job, leave the company rather, and I started looking for new jobs. Attended many interviews and I was jobless for over 18 months. So I was disappointed and devastated, considering it was, my family was dependent, rather my parents were dependent on my financial assistance. So I felt that time that it was I had to look for all the opportunities on my way because the pain in rejection is better than pain of regret. So I started looking for opportunities outside my area of field and I was able to join the services sector, software services sector. And then on, and life actually went fine, passed through the different global recessions in 2016, and we never know, as per IT experts, could there be one in 2022 or 2023. So currently I'm working for a Sweden-based company as a program manager leading a team of enthusiastic software professionals. So the journey of 1000 miles begins with a single step. Here I am to be part of Bangalore Toastmasters Club to focus mainly on OLA, a short form of OLA, observe learn and adapt and learn the, the crux of leadership skills and public speaking skills. 
my hobbies include traveling listening to music and reading books that was my journey from sugarcane city to silicon city over to those master from dynamic leadership manual and he is going to be evaluated by DTM Radhid on behalf of DTM Radhid may i request postmaster nagesh to read out the guidelines please the second speaker DTM Sumitra Manmohan is attempting her level 5 speech leading in any situation the purpose of this project is for her to apply the skills needed to successfully lead a volunteering organization and the purpose of this speech is for her to share some aspects of her as an impact of 360 degree evaluation experience so some aspects of her experience as a leader and the impact of 360 degree evaluation. Sorry about that. Back to you. The speaker who is going to dazzle on stage is a distinguished Toastmaster. The first distinguished Toastmaster in southern India. She had served as the president of Bangalore Toastmasters Club. She is a corporate trainer. Great speaker, amazing speaker, and a speaker for excellence. So, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together to welcome our next speaker, DTM Sumitra Manmohan on stage. Thank you, Dr. Kamaitya, for that introduction. Leaders become great not with their powers but their ability to empower others, said Kathleen Blanchard. A very good evening, my fellow Toastmasters and dear esteemed guests. Good evening. good evening. I'm sure all of you would have been inspired by some movie or the other, isn't it? Yes. That is Aminpur by Amir Khan not just inspired me, but it also sowed a seed of a dream in me. A dream that someday I would share my power of expression with dyslexic students, instill in them self-esteem and boost their self-confidence. Thanks to the high, uh, high performance leadership project, I got this opportunity and that became my culmination to my leadership journey to get the DTM. It all started in May of 2010. I decided I have to build up a database of dyslexic students. So when I contacted Professor Subramanian, the president of the Maleshwaram Association for Dyslexia, he wholeheartedly shared his list with me of 50 students. He also put me on to Aparna, a counsellor for dyslexic students. 
she was thrilled to inform this program to her students. She also suggested, Sudhatra, why don't you go and contact some schools that have exclusive batches of dyslexics? Accordingly, I went, but it was very disappointing. They hardly showed interest, and one of them wanted to know if I was a certified dyslexic trainer. Not disheartened, I went ahead because I knew I had a noble mission. Then my next step was to fix a welly. Those days, we used to meet in the St. Joseph's Commerce College. I approached the dean. I was taken aback and he said, you will have to pay 3,000 per session. I said, but I'm doing it free of cost. Nothing. Have to pay it himself. Not disheartened, I moved on because I know if one door closes, many more are going to open. And rightly, I happened to drop in at times because I knew they had a training venue. There I got to meet Priyanka, who was in charge of Times Foundation. She got so excited about my program, and when she heard I'm doing it free, she said, we can give you the hall free of cost for all your sessions. I was thoroughly excited. My next step was to work out the publicity. Priyanka immediately offered that she would carry out, carry this post immediately. I got a, a this, a, my, it, it appeared in the news column as well as it started coming on the weekends in the events column. Exciting. I went on to Deccan Herald and Time, I mean Indian Express. My candor did not pay me because when they knew their competitor was with me with black tail of cubes. So the next, when I went to Hindu, I was more tactful, discreet, try and avoided the mention of time. They carried a news item, they gave it in the engagement columns as well. So if you are determined, if you are positive, you are bound to succeed in your mission. And then came the D-Day, July 11th. I set out with mixed feelings. Excited, it was an adventure, but a little anxious. How many would turn up? When I went there, seven turned up. I was in a dilemma. Do I go ahead or cancel it? But then when I saw those eager faces and the parents, and I realized their needs, I decided to go ahead, whatever be the risks. And it paid off. In, another, in the following session, I got another two. One was a severe dyslexic. His name was Piran. He came into class absolutely nervous, inhibited. He just refused to mingle with the others. But as the sessions moved on, and uh, for the opening session, I had invited Varun Mirle, who was a dyslexic member of our club. He gave a motivation, motiv motivating speech and the kids got so excited. And when I had to mention this project in the club, many uh, Toastmasters volunteered to support me. So that day I had Vikash Bansal for the first session. Thereafter I had Aniket Singh who supported me right through the sessions. When I interacted with these students, I realized their level of articulation was way below what I expected. So then we decided to just put aside the manual and we innovated and you know made changes. It turned out to be just extended table topic sessions and the children enjoyed the role plays. And as I saw them, as I saw the gradual transformation, they became more articulate, they started interacting with each other and not yet times also. And Piran, Siddhya dyslexic, on the last day, he stood in front of the class, absolutely determined. He got his brother to write out his essay on his favorite sports hero. There he was, he had difficulty reading, but 
he let go went through for five minutes. That was a sublime moment for me that I had made a difference to not only this boy but all the other kids. Somehow, I mean, we could not continue because the kids had some exams and tests and what. But the parents were really happy because after two months I got inquiries. Are you doing this program again? So my fellow Toastmasters, what did I learn from this experience? I got a great insight into situational leadership and as our theme today says, go through, grow through what you go through. And certainly, I was convinced a strong positive attitude, your persuasive skills, and your flexible mind to make changes in your plan. And whatever be your resources, just move ahead to keep the momentum going. Otherwise, you lose hope. And that's what I learned. And the best part was, as I, I achieved my DTL, Times of India, Deccan Herald and Indian Express gave me wide coverage of achieving the DTM as with focus on this project. And best of all, the icing on the cake. Toastmasters International Magazine gave me a two-page profile because of this project and my DTM. So my fellow Toastmasters, I urge you that when you take up your high performance leadership projects, do something outside Toastmasters, beyond the club. And uh, you know Toastmasters, because that's the true test of your Toastmasters skills. And believe me, it is a very fulfilling experience. As I sign off, I'd like to say, I don't know how great I became, but certainly the experience was immensely great. So my fellow Toastmasters, what are you waiting for? Get ready to experience greatness as well. Back to our Toastmasters. I think she deserves a round of applause for this. Let's move on to the next session, which is called as a table topic session. To take us through this session, we have with us a Toastmaster who hails from the city, which nestles in the lap of Western Guards at Silsi. Now, a typical Bangalorean, a software engineer, been with the, in Bangalore for the past 20 years, and more importantly, he loves being a table topic master. So, ladies and gentlemen, please. I think. There is a link which was shared in your WhatsApp and the password is Red Woods. So please choose the best speaker for today. The password is Red Woods. It's not Red Wood, it's Red Woods. Yes. Now it's over to the man who loves being at TTM. So it's over to Toastmaster Nagendra.
so please participate today session will be of around 15 minutes i will try to call as many speakers as possible each speaker will get a time of 1 to 1 and 1/2 minutes let me know let's begin the first topic is <coughs> what would you choose the one which is very special or the one which is very stable the one which is very special or the one which is very stable those master allen please well. you know there are a lot of words thrown around called special stable and i remember i was very small and uh, i was watching an interview and uh, a lady asked the other person how do i know that the other person is the right person for me so the other person says there is no right person there is you make it right for you so i believe when it comes to people i don't look for special or stable i believe that people should be themselves and if there is acceptance that's great if it's not it's time to move on and i think that we going into a world where we're always looking for stability will not work because life is all about ups and downs we look for a world which is special when there are a lot of days you get up and don't feel anything but special you feel down and out but i feel that knowing that you are just another person in this world and if the other person accepts you for who you are that is a special feeling and gives you a lot of stability thank you thank you postmaster ali i thought you will choose one but you mixed both and made one for yourself thank you <laughs> the next topic is dream big for future or achieve something today dream big for future or achieve something for today postmaster ali topic master fellow toast masters and guests good evening the topic i received today is either dream big for the future or do something great today and i think that uh, really justifies uh, how we should really live life if i were to give you an example there was this person i knew who was absolutely down in the dumps in the sense that he had a good job he had uh, everything nice in him but he was not really enjoying what he was doing but then he just broke away from that stable job from that special job and then he moved on to something that he really liked he was a software developer and then he moved on to becoming an architect and now i believe he works for one of the biggest architecture companies in bangalore which is prestige and his work i have seen his work is excellence the passion in which he explains things and when he took me to one of his sites and explained how he executed this and how the design came out for this what challenges he faced is absolutely phenomenal and that to me really uh, you know personifies what the topic is either do something special today or plan for the future and i think you even know that person and some of you might it's nandan dawde so i am really inspired by the way nandan really broke out of his shell so over to you for thank you prof master abhay the next topic is how do you describe a person how do you describe a person who hurts one person to make 100 people happy prof master so 
how do you describe that person who makes one person unhappy and makes a hundred person happy? Well, the guru in this is my granddaughter, nine-year-old granddaughter, Sia. The other day she came to me and said, Amma, Amma, it was 10 o'clock in the night. Come and play snakes and ladders with me. I thought two games that will be over. So I started playing with her. I won five games in a row. It was 10.30, not 7.20. And I said, Sia, it's late, better go to bed. She said, you can't go now. She was really making me crazy. I said, I want to sleep. She said, no, you can't. I said, why? She said, it's not over yet. It's not over until I win. Friends, if we picked up that lesson from her, I thought later on. Later on, she won after 12 games that I won in a row. Unfortunately, the dice was in my favor. Maybe Duryodhana was on my side. <laughs> and the dice was in my favor. And I kept on winning, she kept on losing, and finally when she won, she yawned, she stretched, and she went to bed. And she taught me a lesson that day, that I am bigger than the circumstances. I will not go to bed feeling a loser. I will not go to bed feeling a flop star. I will go to bed when I declare myself a rock star. That's the message she gave everybody. She made me unhappy, but she sent a message to the world that I shall not live the life of victimhood and I shall stand into my personal greatness. Thank you very much. Structure for the next food for them or even for the children important the education, the jobs, or our Lord, your own experience. Think of your parents because I am from a village that village and those people are like that only for decades because there is nothing there for them to look for and they have to rush to the city. One, for education, and next, for the jobs. Until our leaders, our governments, decide to take the infrastructure there, and not only the education, but the jobs also. These villagers and villagers, my dear friends, will continue to become empty. Our leaders must realize. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to enlighten the dose masks here. So I think there are two key characteristics that, that are going to define what we become. And I believe that is very much true in any circumstance. That is consistency and persistency. So even if you have to improve your health or your job, anything, you have to be consistent. When you become consistent, you reach that goal or whatever is your destination. 
but if you are persistent, then you are going to become a special version of yourself. You become emerge victorious or you become a special person. So if we have to see ourselves as the best, best version of ourselves, where the, the topic says that the best is yet to come, we have to keep working on it. And I am sure all of us, wherever we are, have to put in that extra effort in order to overcome that situation and become victorious. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ghostmaster Vijay. I am sure we all can be, always we can improve and be a better version of ourselves. The next topic is, I can, but I may not. I can, but I may not. Ghostmaster Joseph. Master, fellow Toastmasters and dear guests, I, I think uh, that is a thought that we should never ever start any job because the moment we feel that we cannot do something, I think that's the point from where you are certainly going to make it true. That is, you are going to fail. So I think when whenever we are given anything to do. We should start off very positively, feeling that yes, I can and I will accomplish. So that is the starting point of our way to success. So like they say, anything that is well begun is more than 50% of the task accomplished. So I think the first thing is when I am given a task, I should think yes, I can. There may be challenges. but. There is nothing to stop me and I can do it, I will do it. And that will set you in a very positive frame of mind and I am sure that we will find success. If not, even if there are obstacles, I think we will find our way through and we will not get put down or let down. And that's what Toastmasters uh, always teaches us and uh, I think that's what we all Toastmasters stand for. So over to you, Kapil Master. for the day, your thoughts about identity, your thoughts about identity, any guests want to attempt and raise their hand.
So all the purposes when you solve, it brings your own identity. Even Rhonda Byrne, who wrote the book Hero, she told that each and every... So now let's move on to the third session, which is an evaluation session to take us through this. May I invite our team, Postmaster Priyanka, and go on stage. Yeah, round of applause for Priyanka. Okay, a very good evening to everybody present here. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. And my target speaker in particular. Vishwanath, you broke the ice today and I think you did it in a splendid fashion. First of all, I was immediately caught by your presence of mind on stage and I'll tell you how. Our timer here fumbled and the bell fell down creating a loud noise. Usually a person coming on stage can get startled, but you didn't get startled. So that itself means that you are a calm and composed guy on stage and that is a hallmark of a true Toastmaster. You use the word Ola and I'm going to use it to give your evaluation today. So the O stands for amazing opening and closing. I loved the way you concluded your speech. It was a, I feel it was better than the opening. However, for an icebreaker, I will give that an A+. Plus. The L stands for loud and lovely gestures. If everybody observed, you would have seen that he took about four to five steps on stage and not more than that. For me, that is perfect body language. Your hand gestures were on point and if you were in the old manual, I think you would have already completed CC6. And lastly, A, adaptability. This is where I want to recommend something for you. Throughout the speech, you were speaking in one monotonous tone with 
definite pauses. Here's what's going to happen if you speak in one single base. Everything that you say will sound the same. You see that? As you give pauses in between, which you were, with one steady pace and with extra pauses, you are giving extra emphasis which is not necessary. Just work on this aspect and I'm sure you'll be an amazing speaker. Now to summarize what I just did, I've written a poem and this trick I copy of my mentor Rajdeep sir. Yes, you've got to work on your pace. You've got to stitch your pauses like a lace. Then even Vishwanath Anand can watch you ace. Over to you, Jackal Bhai. Thank you, DTM Lalitanush. A wonderful evaluation, a very physical and a detailed evaluation. I'm sure with this evaluation, next time it will be a notch higher. And Vishwanath, I have to congratulate you for taking your first stepping stone to come on stage and present yourself because I know how terrifying this place can be. Congratulations. Let's give a huge round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to the second speech. The second speech was evaluated by the PM Rashti Manwani.
Before I give my evaluation, I would like to call my evaluation team, that is the TAC team, and so that they could share the report and hope that I'll give my evaluation. I would like to first call the time board to please share your report. Toastmaster, for Toastmaster Chetan, I'll read out the timer report. Uh, so the Sadhya Towns took 2 minutes 42 seconds. Uh, Toastmaster Vishwanath and Sumitra Ma were within time. Table topic speakers, Toastmaster Vandana took 12 minutes, ex uh, 12 seconds uh, extra. Uh, the, both the evaluators, uh, Lalit took 2 minutes 20 seconds and Toastmaster Raj, DTM Rajdeep took 2 minutes 40 seconds. Over to you. Thank you. I would like to call the R counter Toastmaster Sita Ram to please share the report. They were use of cut words like uh, so and uh, the word and was repeated 5 times. So the word uh,
the first person who will start the meeting and we are the one who set the tone and the energy. No matter, I mean I know it's the first time you've taken, but next time if you never get a chance to try and bring in that energy, or probably in, term, in a way of greeting, it's your first time, you feel bring that energy by greeting everyone. Yeah, that is one thing which I would probably suggest if next time when you come to Adnam, otherwise, and I say very well, you explained about the team, you got in your personal story, and you have gotten the rules, even though it was a last minute thing, you had put everything very well. Thank you, Toast, uh, to, to, thank you so much, uh, Master George. Moving on to the President, you very well called in the standing presiding officer for the day. And I must say, Toastmaster uh, uh, Toast Chaitra, it didn't feel like it was the first time you're playing a presiding officer role because you very well started. You greeted the guests. You acknowledged everyone who was here. I like the story that it wasn't about the team. Very nice story. Very crisp and short. I have nothing to say, but yeah, next time, if I have to share something a little would, would be probably when we, anybody gets a chance to use the stage, try and use the stage as much as possible. That is something that I would say, and the volume of your voice, a little bit of variation. Otherwise, it was amazing. Let's give a huge round of applause to Toastmaster Chaitra. <laughs> it was followed by an induction, and I must say the induction went on very smoothly. I have nothing to say, Toastmaster George. It was your last thing, uh, last induction, but let's give a huge round of applause for those master jobs as the leader. And now moving on to the most important uh, person, the Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Vaidyanathan. I must say one thing: you have a very encapsulating voice. You just come on the stage, you can just grab anyone's attention. You were amazing with whatever you did today, the way you connected every meeting. The story also that you brought in was very quick, short, and very well relatable. And one thing I've seen whenever you come on stage, you always speak about some eminent people, especially in sports, where a lot of people can relate and learn a lot. And that is something that I really like about the stories that you bring in every time you take over the stage. For that, I must say, it was amazing. I mean, I can just keep hearing your stories. Very well put across. And yes, the meeting was, you had very well kept in account about the guests who are over here and very well explained about the entire Toastmasters, how the Toastmasters journey and how the meeting is conducted, which is very well put across in a very simple and very relatable way. And carry forward the entire meeting by uh, when you were handovering the stage to every role taker who were taking on the stage that were also very well introduced every role taker crisp, nice, something very different about every role taker who came on the stage that was something very nice to hear about everybody and know something different which was not heard before about them. So about this, kudos to you. Let's give a huge round of applause. I have nothing else to say. Now one thing if I have to add would be probably in terms of pace. Suddenly, your pace goes very high. That it, for some people, it could be a little hard to probably, uh, you know, hold on the message or hear what exactly you're saying. That is only one thing, but otherwise, <coughs> it's flawless. Let's give a huge round of applause to the master. Right and then we went following the next session was to take the topic, which was taken over by Toastmaster Nagendra. I must say, it's nice to see you after a very long time over here, and uh, you very well took over the entire table topic session. Probably, probably if I could just add, one thing was really uh, great was you had very simple topics where everyone who came up on stage could speak something about it. That is something very good about the topics that you selected. But if I could just share a few points that probably could help you next time would be, um, if you could explain a little more if, about what table topics is, especially for the guests who are not very well uh, well versed about table topics. Though uh, Toastmaster Ignatian did explain a little about it, 
But when you get a chance to come on stage as a table topic master, take the opportunity and you know, try to bring in some different explanation about what table topic session is about. That is one thing. And one more thing that I would suggest is when each speaker came and before the stage, if you could just add a line, even a line is good now, knowing the time constraints that we have, a line about connecting, taking one line of message from the previous speaker and connecting to the next. That would be a great uh, thing to hear about. And a kind of a summary also for the people who are uh, listening. Otherwise, overall, it was a great meeting. I have, I mean, I would like to thank the committee for giving me this opportunity play as a general evaluator role. I was very nervous, let me be very honest, but thank you so much. Just to the committee, one small suggestion, all the role takers who would be taking over, if a little bit, you know, before the meeting starts, you know about their role, if a little bit of explanation is given, so that, you know, when they come here, they yeah. can. Now it's time to hand it over to the presiding officer, Toastmaster Chaitanya. Thank you very much. Thank you, Toastmaster Veridanta, for conducting this whole uh, meeting so well. And also, uh, thank you to DTM Kapli for not just telling us and teaching us about pauses, but also demonstrating us, demonstrating that to us, and making them so much more powerful. Can we give him a round of applause? Okay, I have an announcement to make for Sunday. This Sunday we will be holding an installation ceremony for the incoming committee. I hope all of you members will attend and I am looking forward to see all of you. Please RSVP if you haven't already done so. Do we have any first time guests over here? Okay, uh, quite a few. I would like you to just stand up in your place and uh, give us your names. Go ahead. Intera. Intera. Sumitra. <laughs> 
come to the end of today's session. I would like to thank the committee for giving me this opportunity to be the presiding officer, and I thoroughly enjoyed today's meeting. I now declare meeting number 1330 closed.